Paloma matone or chicken under a brick. So first of all, I take my, my spine and I'm gonna put it in a little bag and save it with the wing tips and stuff. Toss it in my freezer for next time I'm making chicken stock. Look at me, I bought all this stuff. Let's use all this stuff. So I'm gonna take a little string and tie these guys together like a little chicken handcuff. So it's kind of doing the little hands up rather than roadkill. You know, if you're very fussy and you wanna use scallion greens or something that's edible, go ahead. But you know, that's a little precious. You don't need to if you don't want to. Okay, so look at that. I'm gonna marinate these two guys. Okie doke, look at my prep work is all done. I'm just gonna give my hands and my board a little rinse here. My garlic is all sticky stuff. And I'm gonna move on to my marinade. So I've got my garlic and rosemary chopped for my marinade, yay. Fantastic, so let's go ahead and add some other lovely flavors here. I have some cumin seeds that I toasted. So that's what I do with spices. Give these a little grind. And my spice grinder, it's a coffee grinder that I dedicate only to spices, hence spice grinder. All right, let's take a little look-see. So there we go. We're gonna add that to my chopped rosemary and garlic. Yes. So I'm gonna add a little lemon zest and juice. I'm gonna use my little raspy microplane thing here. Love this. One of my favorite pieces of kitchen equipment. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of spicy stuff, crushed red pepper. I can go ahead and do that now. That's classically in this dish. So is lemon, so is rosemary and garlic. Cumin and another super secret flavor weapon are my little thumbprints on this whole shoot and match. Pimentone, smoked paprika. So we're gonna add a little bit of that in there as well. So dry stuff, I'm gonna go ahead and juice a little lemon in there and add some olive oil and go ahead and marinate my chicken. Look at that. Ugh. Beautiful. So I'm gonna marinate my chicken. I'm gonna go ahead and sort of smear all of this deliciousness on those chickens. And then I'm going to leave it out of the refrigerator. I know. So I'm gonna do it on my counter, but up to two hours. You know, any longer than that, toss your, uh, whatever it is you're marinating, right in the fridge, okay? Up to two hours, it's safe to be in the danger zone, as we call it, from 40 degrees to 140. So here we go. We're beautifully marinated. I'm gonna go ahead and season these generously. I've got a lot of lovely flavors on there, but no salt in there yet. So, so here we go. Now, when we lay this in here, we lay the chicken in there very nicely because the first thing this chicken skin is gonna do is stick there. And the first thing I want to do is move it. So here we go, lay it in. Beautiful. I can also tell my pan is nice and hot because I hear that ah, rambunctious sizzle, what I like to call Carnegie Hall. So it's like rambunctious applause. So we lay these guys in there. Smells delicious already. So let's go ahead, season up this side of this shooting match. All right, now I'm not touching this. I want to poke, I want to prod. I don't feel like I'm cooking unless I do it but it will unstick itself when it's ready. All right, one more little hand wash. And now comes the superstar of our whole day. We are talking chicken with a brick. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay another pan right on top of there, really apply some pressure, apply some pressure. And then, look at I have a brick that I've wrapped in aluminum foil. If you have your weights from the gym that you're not using anymore, you can go ahead and use that here as well. This keeps everything nice and down and our chicken nice and flat. That will help the skin get nice and crispy. So I'm gonna let that sear for a little while to really develop lovely colors and flavors. It's amazing how good it smells already. And I'm gonna go ahead and get my chicken in the oven. All right, here we go. So my oven is at 400 degrees. And it is time for chicken. Ooh, this is a heavy, heavy gun. These guys have been in the oven for about 15 minutes or so. So I'm gonna pull these out. I'm gonna do a lot of hot <coughs> brick removal. Look at that. Look at these, wow. Little flatties. And look at all this beautiful, good flavored stuff. That is so good looking. Okay, so let's take these out. I'm gonna kind of ditch the fat here. And I'm gonna go ahead and add some white wine to this to deglaze the pan to really use all of these beautiful flavors. Look at these beautifuls. Okay, so 
Here we go, we're gonna ditch a lot of that oil, but I really wanna make sure I use all of these flavors. So I'm gonna add some chicken stock to my chicken pan that I deglazed with some white wine so we'll have a little drizzling juice. Just a little bit, just to make everybody juicy, juicy. Mmm, delicious. That, of course, can use some salt as well. Yeah, baby. Look at that beautiful, crispy brown skin. Lovely. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and give this some of my pan juice as well. All right, that was delicious. So I'm gonna taste this gorgeousness. All right, nice and juicy. And that skin and the whole chicken is really succulent because I weighted it down with my brick, but it had all that olive oil in there to really baste as it cooked. So let's give this guy a taste. And you know what? It's nice and brown too. And you know what we love about brown food? It tastes good. Oh, yes, beautifully succulent. That is not even dry in a little bit. And that brown food and the cumin and all those spices and everything that I used on there, very delicious.